what I'm here to talk to, to you about today is the future of user experience. As Anthony was saying, this is kind of where it all comes together. Um, we believe right now we are on the cusp of probably the biggest jump in, or the biggest change in user experience uh, since the iPhone came on the market. There's been a lot in the press. Is mobile innovation dead? Is it over? We think we're about to hit a major uptrend. Um, and if you, if you kind of take it to its very core, what, what's going on here and why is that? Um, at the end of the day, we as humans uh, type at about 40 words a minute. And that's the primary mechanism with which we interface with machines today. We can speak at about three times that rate. These are all in English, obviously. Um, and we read at about twice that rate. So in our quest for speed and efficiency, which is at the root of everything, uh, we're going to a world where we feel uh, we're going to be speaking primarily, there are contexts where we won't be speaking, but speaking to machines um, and then reading the response, right? Um, and that is the written word. Uh, there's an argument that if you can primarily communicate with images, like our ancestors did, you can actually communicate at uh, multiples of 250 words a minute in terms of transmitting ideas. For those of you who were at uh, Facebook's F8 conference or who saw the highlights, um, this was one of the most interesting things they did. They have now a cognitive science group of over 100 folks. Um, and Facebook's point is speech is cool, reading is cool, but they're all still limited, uh, rate limited in a certain way, whereas our brains work at hundreds or could work at hundreds of times how fast we can speak. We could actually formulate and transmit thoughts much more quickly. We're limited by our vocal cords, et cetera, et cetera. So they're working on what if we, could, what if we can communicate directly with machines. And this woman here has ALS. She is trapped inside her body. And they have gotten through direct contact with the brain her to be able to transmit information at eight words a minute, uh, which is obviously a huge breakthrough. Um, there's a big problem with that for the rest of us is that it's done by inserting electrodes in the brain. So it's not going to happen for all of us tomorrow. But there are, they believe over the next 10, 20 years, there are going to be mechanisms um, for us to communicate at that speed. That's kind of where we're all going. But in the near term, um, 2017, 2018, we believe this gets us to a multimodal world. right? And that is a world, Forrester sometimes calls it a blended ecosystem. But it is a world where we can communicate um, through to one device via one interface and receive information back via another, right? Um, and it's complicated to execute on, right? Uh, we have multiple digital ecosystems we live in, Amazon, Apple, Facebook. Um, they all have a lot of our data. They're not sharing that data anytime soon. So as end users, how do we navigate um, and this can be both in an enterprise setting or for employees or in a consumer setting. And we're in all sorts of contexts, right? We've got lots of devices, operating systems, interfaces. How do, we all, how do we make it work together? And what am I really talking about? I think the easiest for me um, is, to, is to show this by example. What we're about to show you here is something we're working on uh, for Regal Cinemas. Um, Anthony actually earlier mentioned buying movie tickets. It's a very kind of standard use case. Um, what we're talking about and how this works in reality is you wake up in the morning, you walk downstairs, you ask your, your Echo, Alexa, what's showing tonight, right? And the reason you do that is because that is the fastest way to engage. It's way faster than turning on your phone, finding the app, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't want to listen to Alexa tell you, here are the 20 movies, here are the different show times. That's why voice hasn't really taken off yet, because all these are voice in, voice out experiences, and the voice return kind of sucks, right? But what's, what, what, and this is, this is working right now. You're going to get a notification, one tap. You're going to see what movies are playing. You could say, give me more info on born, born identity, born one, whatever. Um, then that comes back via another text, more information. And then you can tap to select the ticket, or you could order the ticket, get me two tickets tonight. And now you've taken a transaction that's already pretty quick, right? You know, a long time ago, you had to go to the theater. F 10 years, 15 years ago, you got to go on your computer. Now you're using an app, but it still takes three or four minutes. We think we can get it down to less than a minute. 
to find the movie you want to go to and buy tickets. That may not seem like a big deal. I can guarantee you it's a huge deal to consumers. That is where they will gravitate. And this example is a consumer example, but the exact same thing is happening in the enterprise. Uh, we're working with clients every day where they're taking processes that used to take 10, 15, 20 minutes in the field, looking at user manuals, trying to find part, you know, they'd have, here's our manual, here's the parts list from the manufacturer, but our warehouse uses a different number, and you gotta match it up, and then you gotta type it in a laptop, you know, 17 minutes to order a part. Now we're getting down to 15 seconds. Can you order me a new, because we know what machine they're at. We know, we have all kinds of context, right? And so to make this work, and I think this has been a big theme today, we have to change the questions we're asking. Right? Before we were always, the briefs we would get was, I need an app that does X, right? How much does that cost? A better question is, how might we better do X? How might we better allow our technicians in the field to order a part? How might we better get a, um, a consumer to buy X from us? Um, this is a, a, an approach that was originally pioneered by IDEO 10 or 12 years ago across all kind of product design, we're really using it very focused on digital design right now. And so another really popular example, if you go to a lot of these conferences, you'll hear it again and again. I don't know if there's anyone from Domino's in the room. Um, but Domino's has done this very well. And pizza is a very easy use case, right? It's not that hard to figure out. I got to order pizza. I got to put a couple toppings on it. I got to get it. Not that hard. But, and so Domino's has an advantage in that sense. Um, over many of our businesses, which are much more complicated, but they kind of completely changed the way that they viewed themselves. And this is, to me, the most interesting part, is that of their folks at headquarters, they say half are in software and analytics. Um, and that is a fundamental change from where they were 10 years ago. Um, the output is you can order pizza anywhere. You can even order pizza on Slack, which you know, is a finally a productive use of Slack, at least how it's used in my company. Um, <laughs> And they all work together in concert, right? You can, or, this is today. The Regal example is today. You could go, you could, okay, Google placed the order, and you can watch that order be prepared across any device, Android, Wear, a native app, a website, and it all works in concert, right? And that seems like it's really easy to do. It's really hard to do. Um, and and the, primary, uh, the primary investment they had to make, and I guarantee you most of those 400 folks are working on the back end. Right? The front end stuff is actually pretty easy. Um, and the results, you know, we all talk about Amazon, Google, and kind of the, that. Domino's has outpaced that stock, all those, over the last six, seven years. They've gone from 9 to 15% market share. So there have been all kinds of folks who have come to presentations like this and, and announced the next big thing. It's a segue. 3D TV, AR, VR, to some extent, that the jury's still out on, at least in mass adoption. We think multimodal is different because it's software and not hardware. The hardware is in everyone's hands today. Now we just have to update the software to make it work in this way. Um, and so what, what do we see happening over the next year or two? Um, and where can, where can people kind of spend their time? One is focus on infrastructure, right? The infrastructure has to be set up to make all this work first. The front end folks like us have a really easy job when we can get at the data, we're talking about data lakes, et cetera, all that's, when that's ready to go, we can start playing. Start with the current platforms. Like there's no need to, to go into all kinds of new stuff. You, could, you can test a bunch of this stuff just using the iPhone and having voice in and visual response, and then you go to other platforms, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, keep it lean. That example that I just showed you from, uh, from Regal, that took three people about six weeks to do, right? So these are light, lean, prototyping things. We test them, and then they go out to the market. So I'd encourage you to kind of look at that within your own organization. Thank you.